everybody and welcome back to D-Ray Shop. Today in the shop we've got a 2021 Yamaha 850 Wolverine R-Spec. Today we're going to show you how to service all of the fluids and the filters. Alright, so let's get started. Alright. We put this machine on the lift now so it'll be easy to see where the drain plugs are. We're going to start by changing out the front differential fluid. Uh, this is the front of the skid pan on the front of the machine. And our drain plug is going to be approximately right there. I'm going to zoom in there and get you a little shot of it. That's an Allen plug. What size is that, Randy? It's a six millimeter Allen. Okay, well he's going to go ahead and take that plug out and drain that differential. Once the differential's drained, you just replace the plug back in here, snug it back up, don't, and be sure that don't, don't over tighten it. Now we're going to remove the filler plug and refill the differential. The differential fill plug is going to be right here, driver's side toward the front of the differential. Okay, now we're going to refill the differential with 80W90 gear oil, and this will take just a little bit less than a half a quart. And you just want to fill this up to right even with the threads. All right, we got this filled up now. We're just going to put the plug back in, snug it up, and be sure don't over tighten the plug. Okay, now we're going to service the transmission. The transmission drain plug is going to be located approximately halfway back on the machine, and it'll be over toward the passenger side. We're going to remove the transmission drain plug. This will take a 12 millimeter socket. Okay, now that the transmission is drained, we'll just uh, replace the drain plug, snug this thing up, and make sure you don't over tighten it. Okay, now we're ready to refill the transmission. In order to do this, you have to take the passenger side seat cushion up. Okay, now that we've removed the seat, underneath the seat is an access door to your filler plug and dipstick. Now we're ready to fill the transmission back up and we're gonna be using the 80W90 gear oil and we'll just fill this up till it tops up full on the dipstick. Okay, once you've filled the transmission up, it will hold approximately one and a half quarts. Just make sure it's on the full mark. Now we're going to change the rear differential oil. The drain plug is going to be on the passenger side near the bottom. When the differential is drained, you just put your plug back in, snug it up, just be sure you don't over tighten it. The differential fill plug is located on the rear passenger side.
Now we're going to fill the differential up to the threads with ADW 90 gear oil. Next we'll install the fill plug. Snug this up good, just don't over tighten it. Now we're going to change the engine oil and filter and the drain plugs are going to be located about three quarters of the way back on the passenger side and the drain bolt heads will be 12 millimeter and there's two of those. Once it's finished draining, just replace your plugs, snug them up, and don't over tighten them. Now we're going to drain the engine oil tank and it's going to be located in the rear driver's side underneath the bed and it's going to be a 10 millimeter headed bolt. We've put this piece of cardboard here so when we drain the oil out it deflects the oil into the drain and keeps it out of the skid pan. Once your oil is drained, just replace your drain plug, tighten it down, but don't over tighten. Now, several times throughout this video series, when Randy is talking about replacing drain plugs and filler plugs, one thing he mentioned several times is that you do not want to over tighten those drain plugs or fill plugs and there's a reason for that most of these drain fill plugs will have like a copper or aluminum sealing washer on it and what that's designed to do is as you snug that down it just kind of crushes it and it helps seal the drain plug or the fill plug to the respective case that it's going into so which means when you when you tighten those down you're not going to get a real solid feel like you would like it was just a regular bolt or a fastener and a lot of times what we see is people tend to have a, a tendency to want to over tighten those because they keep feeling not feeling like it's really getting real tight so they just keep cranking on it and what it does is it squishes those plugs washers flat and so it can, it can no longer crush and seal properly also what we run into from time to time is they'll over tighten them to the point where it literally pulls the threads right out of the aluminum case you don't want to do that and that's that's a whole nother can of worms you do not want to get into so always, anytime you're draining or refilling any of your respective differentials, transmissions, or the engine crankcase itself, when you take the drain bolts out, be sure to retain the, the copper sealing washers, and then when you put those back in, just run them in until you feel it bottom light, and then just give it a good light snug, and that's all that's required. Now, it'll save you a lot of headache on down the road. Now we're gonna change the engine oil filter. In order to do this, you have to remove this panel. You don't have to remove the rear wheel to get to this access panel. We've removed it just to get a better shot with the camera. The panel is held on by two quick release screws and then seven bolts. The oil filter will be right here on the rear of the engine. We'll just spin this one off, put a new one on, and replace the access panel.
Now we're going to add two and a half quarts of oil to the engine oil tank. Okay, now we're going to start the engine up to let it run for a few minutes and circulate the oil good and then we'll top it off. Okay, now we're going to let it set for just a few minutes, let the oil settle, and then we'll top off the oil tank. Alright, now one thing to keep in mind when you're filling up your engine oil tank is after you put your initial two and a half quarts in there, start it up, let it run for a few minutes, and then begin to add your engine oil till you get it up to the full mark on the gauge. Be sure that you let this machine idle for several minutes and warm up when you go to check the oil because what we've run into is we just ran it for just a couple of minutes and we checked it and the oil showed to be low on the stick when we knew we had the correct quantity in there right around three and a half quarts. So after referring to the owner's manual, it specified that you need to let it run idle until it was warmed up or approximately idle for around five to 10 minutes. And once we did that, then we, also, we found that the engine oil was actually slightly overfilled. So we pulled just a little bit of oil out of it to get it to the correct level on the gauge. Now, another thing that I've noticed, I did a lot of research on some of the forums and I've, I've had several cases of where people have said if they fill it to the full mark, that it tends to want to blow a little oil out of the crankcase and into the air box. So what we're doing is we're gonna fill this one up to about three quarters of the way up We'll let it run for a few more minutes, circulate that oil real good, then we'll double check it again and make sure we've got it right there on that three quarter mark and then we're gonna call that good. All right, now we're gonna service the air filter and then check the coolant. All right, the air filter is gonna be located under the hood there will be four latches to hold the lid on right here. Just take those loose and this will let you access the air filter. This machine here has a two-stage filtering system. It has the foam filter, the oil filter, and then in the bottom it's got a separate paper filter. Once you've removed the filter, you just pop the cap off the top, pull the foam filter off, wash this in a solvent, and then re-oil it. This filter here, it's really clean. Uh, it has plenty of oil on it, so we're just gonna reassemble this and put it back in. On the secondary filter here, it's not serviceable. If it gets dirty, just replace it. Okay, since we've got the hood already off, we'll go ahead and check the coolant. Radiator's right here. Just make sure it's topped off. Then you also want to check your coolant tank. It's on the passenger side. And just make sure it's up to the full line. going to complete our service video series for our Yamaha Wolverine R-Spec. Hope you find the information was useful. If so, drop us a couple of comments in the comment section below. You know, servicing these machines is not very difficult. If some redneck can do it, so can you. That's right. So also be sure to remember to subscribe to our channel, give the videos a thumbs up, and also click the notification bell so that you can get notifications of our future videos. Be sure to stop by the shop anytime. You never know what we're going to be working on next. All right. Well, as always, y'all have a good one, and we'll see you next time. All right. Now we got this thing on the lift. Show it. Uh,
<laughs> this accesses the that knob right there. The Epitaph. Yes. <laughs> okay, now we're ready to refill the transmission. Ten millimeter head, head ten millimeter. <laughs> now one thing, yeah. See, I'm already screwed in. <laughs> First word out of my mouth. Yeah. There you go. Of course. Shit. <laughs> of our future videos, be sure to shop by. I'm gonna make this work. If I can do it, you can. <laughs>